Hey YouTube, Tech Sparrow here with another OAuth 2 example walkthrough. This time we're going to be using the requests OAuth lib library to connect to the LinkedIn API. So for your app to make this connection to LinkedIn through a user, your application has to be authorized and authenticated before anything can happen. Uh, the LinkedIn API documentation states that they have two authentication workflows. One's called member authorization and the other one is application authorization. So we're going to be doing the member authorization in this example. Um, I decided to take a look at it from this angle here instead of going through GitHub just to show you the difference. But here's kind of the rendered documentation. Works pretty much the same. Just click examples. You'll find the LinkedIn OAuth2 tutorial link. And this is the snippet of code that we're after. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all that stuff. Give it a copy. And then get our working environment set up. Okay, so for starters, we'll open up a terminal. And then, uh, much as before, we're going to go into this projects directory I have and create a directory called LinkedIn OAuth. CD into there, and then we're going to touch a file, just a simple request dot ph because that's all we're going to need it's that simple this is an example only all right we're going to close this terminal and then go ahead and open up our visual studio open up that folder that you just made or we just made projects linkedin okay and now we're going to open the terminal here inside visual studio and get a virtual environment started. So there we go, we got that file. And to do that, it's Python 3-M, V-E-N-V -E is the module we're running, and the name of the directory where we're gonna be putting all our virtual environment stuff in, same thing, this is pretty standard. Okay, now as you can see in our explorer here, V-E-N-V -E has been created, and to activate our Environment, you use the command source and then dig into that directory, VNV, bin, and there's a script called activate. Now you can see right here, this signifies that we're in a virtual environment here. Now we're going to do our dependency installations pip install requests. There we go, it looks pretty good. And then again, pip install request. Oops, got to type better than that. Requests underscore OAuth, OAuth lib. One, 3.1.1, okay. Let's say that our environment is set up. Let's go ahead and paste our example code in and clean it up. I'm using command D here in Visual Studio to Select all instances one by one of these triple arrows. Quick backspace. Let's see, there's a RTS way of doing multi-line stuff. That doesn't work for us here, so let's all put it on one line. There we go. Now that should be good Python syntax. Great, I'm gonna save the file. Okay, before moving on, I want to highlight a few areas of this example that's kind of different from some of the other examples. Um, the first thing being this environment variable being set here, OAuth lib insecure transport. This is being set because in this example, um, the redirect URL is actually being set to localhost. So to get this to work, you would have to spin up, you know, a web server, you know, locally on your machine as your uh, redirect. So um, I'm going to be using my personal website as the redirect. I can type, I swear, I promise. Um, developers for me. And um, because this is using the HTTPS protocol, I don't need to set this, right? But if you were to do just an HTTP, you know, like localhost or whatever, this thing would have to be, this variable has to be set to one to work. 
and it's basically saying yes I know this is an insecure transport go ahead and do it anyways so for running this example for development purposes it's fine definitely don't want to do it in production so um, since I already have you know this set up I'm going to be commenting this out since we're going to be using the HTTPS protocol all right so the next part of the code here is the client ID and secret these are two things that are provided to you via LinkedIn once you register your application with their site. So the way that OAuth2, um, the workflow works, is you use LinkedIn's authentication system to have a user authenticate and approve your app for certain, you know, scopes of information related to that member, right? So, um, for LinkedIn to know who you are and everything, they, they give you a place to register your app and they provide you these two pieces of information. Likewise, they on that platform, they'll have a dashboard where you're gonna be setting the scope of your application, right? So we're gonna do a very simple one where we're just gonna print very basic user information, you know, the user that authenticates with your application. That scope, R under dash light profile. There are several other, I wanna say there's like three or four more in the, what they call like open, the open scope. So this is the stuff that doesn't require any sort of additional special uh, permissions. And that's all documented on their um, API documentation page. So, but for the sake of this example, we're gonna keep it really simple. Okay, now we're going to move down. We've already kind of discussed the redirect URL. Uh, we're going to be talking about this authorization base URL and the token URL. The authorization base URL, this is where we're going to be sending the end user to LinkedIn to make the authentication, right? Again, this value is in the documentation and the token URL is where we're going to be sending our request with the uh, user's authentication code to get our token. Once we have that token um, from LinkedIn, then our application can go move from the authentication servers into the resource servers and we can start grabbing the information, um, you know, as long as it falls under the realm of this scope here, like profile. Now that we've got all that, I think we're ready to look at the LinkedIn side of the equation here. So. Navigate your browser to developer.linkedin.com. <clears throat> Actually, you know what, before that, there are a couple of kind of prerequisites that LinkedIn makes you do before you can uh, make these connections. So obviously you need to have a LinkedIn profile, you know, a LinkedIn account to sign into. And then with that account, you wanna create a company page inside LinkedIn that's gonna be the, you know, whatever, quote unquote company that is the app's gonna be registered through. So once you have those two pieces, then you can come back here and create your app. You can see I've done kind of a few things ahead of time. So I have some autocompletes here. And this field here, your LinkedIn page, that's the LinkedIn company that's gonna be registering the app. So go ahead and find your company the uh, private policy URL is not required, so we'll skip that. We'll add just my little picture of a sparrow here. Agree to their terms. Go ahead and create the app. Here's the registering part. So the company page verifies your app, right? So as long as you're logged in with the person who created the company or has you know, admin access, you should be able to hit this verify button, generate a URL, go ahead and visit that URL and then just click verify. We're done here. Return to the page. I believe you need to reload. There we go. Great. So now we have a verified app in LinkedIn. We can go to this authorization tab here and finally get our client ID. Uh, you can see I've already done this before, but um, this is kind of an entirely new app. So these things are different. There we go. And uh, the next tile down is OAuth2 settings, token time duration, we'll leave it at two months. 
and warrant listing our redirect URL. So that's pretty standard. Just make sure this matches whatever you have in your code. Developers life. Update that. The scope. So this took me a minute to figure out because um, it's not really, it's not super intuitive, but not super difficult to figure out it either. Um, anyways, um, here we, here it's going to show any scopes that are right, like listed on our app or registered with our app. To do that, to add the ones that we need, which according to our code here, or the documentation as well, is R under dash lot profile. You go to this products tab and they have three products here, which are basically just a collection of endpoints. And those endpoints require, you know, certain scopes to go in and get that data. So the one that we want is this uh, sign on with LinkedIn. You can look at the viewpoints or endpoints here and see, you know, the endpoint, the method, and then the scope required to do that, right? So this is the one that we're looking at here. You can see that down here in the code as well. We're going after me, the endpoint me. It's a get and it requires light profile. So we can go back and we have to like register this product by using the select or add the product to our app. And then we return to our auth page and these scopes should now appear here. It's not an automatic thing. So the last couple of times I tried this, it took a few minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and return when it's all loaded up. Alrighty then, that took all of two minutes of hitting the refresh button, but we now um, are confirming that the scopes have been added to the application. So we are basically ready to go back to the code and rock and roll. Um, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to do a little cleanup here. And I also imported this uh, pretty print. And I want to use it here so that our results are more human readable. Um, I'll just grab their example setup. It'll be faster than me typing it by hand. But yeah, we'll drop this in here. And then four. And then replace this with r dot contact. Actually, there's a JSON. This is what we have to do. There we go. So now this thing's going to be, you know, indented and a lot easier to read. It'll look like something worthwhile. Um, okay, everything looks good here. We can crack open a terminal. Our environment's activated. Let's do a quick pit freeze to make sure our stuff is there you know oauth requests and requests oauth so we are ready to rock and roll that would be simple well, actually python 3 simple request okay so now our app is going to send the user to linkedin to authenticate and then authorize our app to have that particular um, scope of permissions. So let's go there. Um, so this is another LinkedIn profile made for this example. His name is Tech Sparrow. And unfortunately I use the same picture for him and the company. So that's a little confusing, but this is the user. This would be the application. We're going to go ahead and so we've already authenticated there. Now we're going to allow the app to have permissions. And we're redirecting to this website, but now we have the URL query parameter of code equaling this long string here. So there's our token. We can start making, now we've basically moved from the authentication server into the resource servers. Now, now we can make those calls for that information based on that user's profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and drop it in here. And there's our response. So we made our request, right? And in the code, we build that request. We fetch the token, we build the request, and then we go ahead and get this resource. This is the response, All right? First name, tech, and this location, last name, Sparrow. Um, 
here they are localized profile picture oh, is this a some sort of resource number I guess but anyways that's how you uh, implement the LinkedIn API using the requests oauth lib. Um, thanks and stay tuned. I'll be going through all those examples. So if there's one that you want to see, it will be coming up shortly. Thanks again.